Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, we are now on the topic about climate change, uh, specifically the factors okay, affecting the uh, weather and the climate. So that is one of our objectives. Uh, also, we need to define weather, okay, we need to define climate, and then under the weather, we need to determine the factors we need to in the in the climate we need to de determine as well yung mga factors na nakaka-apekto sa pagbabago ng ating klima. Okay, so let's start. So on the news we see weather report, okay? Newspapers, tele radio, television, mobile phone applications. So when we say weather, as you can see here that is the day-to-day -day changes, okay, or patterns in the atmosphere. So, in a particular place and a time. Weather is determined by the following factors. Ito yung mga nakaka-bubago ng weather. Okay, we have the air temperature, air pressure, uh, amount and type of precipitation, the wind strength and direction, the types of clouds. So, ito yung, example, ito yung mga example nung nakikita natin sa mga weather app. We have 36 degree, partly cloudy, and the Quezon City, the date, okay, humidity, the wind, precipitation. These are the elements of the weather. So, first is the air temperature. Of course, when we say temperature, that is the hot or coldness okay, of an object. So here, we're particular with air, okay, the temperature of the air. So higher temperatures, we know okay, that if the molecules have high temperature, it will move faster if it has a low temperature of course uh, hindi ganun kabilis yung movement ng mga molecules niya so with that water will evaporate faster secondly we have the air pressure it tells uh, how heavy is the air because we know pressure is the force applied per unit area uh, invisibly hindi na nakikita no, na merong pressure na Taman yung ating katawan because we know air is moving, randomly moving around us. So we feel pressures there. We feel pressure around the air. So, hindi nga lang siya, okay, ganun natin nararamdaman. Kasi hindi naman ganun kabigat yung force na, I mean, hindi naman ganun kabigat yung mga molecules, hindi naman ganun kalakas yung force na ay na-apply sa atin. So, air pressure tells how heavy the air is over a unit of area. Just like what I said. So, with the higher air pressure, the weight of air above you becomes heavier. So, mas mataas ang pressure, mas mabigat. Kalo na sinabi ko, this indicates fair weather. So, with lower air pressure, okay, with lower air pressure, the air molecules move toward the atmosphere. The signal, this signals a stormy weather and a lower air pressure. Okay, so, just like no, low pressure area, something like that on the news we get here. So, amount, next one is the amount and type of precipitation. From, from the word precipitate, okay, precipitation. So, pagbagsak. Okay? So, precipitation can be droplets of water on the liquid state. We have the drizzle, no? ambon, the shower, the downpour, or the solid state. We have the snow, okay, the ice, and the hail. So, yun yung mga, yung amount, okay, ng gano karami yung bumabagsak na ganyan, at yung uri, okay, ng mga precipitate na yan, ayun yung mga uri, we could have the solid state form, the liquid state, okay, yan. So, yung amount nyan, nakaka-apekto yan. Okay, yung uri, yung kung ano man yung babagsak, is nakaka-apekto sa climate, ah, sa weather, rather nung isang area. So, wind strength and direction, Air moves from an area of higher high air pressure to that of low pressure. Okay, we, we are, I've introduced this to you when we were on grade 7. A movement, okay, ng hangin is from high, okay, from high pressure going to the low pressure. So, wind that blows over bodies of water, yung mga hangin na uh, mula, okay, sa uh, anyong tubig ay mas malamig and moist, of course. Kumpara doon sa mga hangin na nagka-travel, okay, sa mga 
anyong lupa land masses they, because they are warmer and dry. So the type of clouds, lastly the type of clouds also affect the weather of an area. So with warm air temperature, mas mainit yung air temperature, okay, water vapor condenses to form clouds. clouds. Okay, we know that in the process of water cycle evaporation and then condensation to form clouds. So the more evaporation takes place, the more saturated the clouds will become and form rain clouds. So makikita natin dito, of course kapag ka nag-evaporate yung liquid kasi sa taas emits a cooler uh, air, it will condense and then after it becomes saturated, hindi na kayang i-hold ng clouds natin, then yun na, mag-precipitate na siya. So the type of clouds, okay, yung na-form sa taas na clouds, is nakaka-apekto rin sa, uh, sa weather noong isang area. So that is weather, okay, that is when we say weather, day-to-day -day changes, day-to-day -day changes or patterns in the atmosphere at a particular place and time. And these are the following factors na makaka-apekto sa ating weather. So that uh, meteorologist they are the one responsible for observing our atmosphere the pag-asa okay, the philippine atmospheric geophysical and astronomical service ad astronomical service administration pag-asa under the dost so si yung kilamang tani okay, yung kila kuyakim ayan so sila yung nag-aaral ng na daily changes and the weather so if weather describes day to day ito na ang pinagkaiba ng ating uh, weather and climate Kung weather day to day, okay, si climate naman is cumulative patterns of weather. Okay, in a particular place over time. So, pang long term to. Kung si weather is short term, si climate is long term. Okay, so the climate in the Philippines, we know it, we don't have four seasons. We just only have two, which is the dry season and the wet season. So, yung mga area na mas malapit doon sa poles, North Pole, South Poles, okay, uh, they can be a sweltering hot or extremely freezing. Sobrang lamig or so, uh, sobrang init or sobrang lamig. So, the, the climate in such countries, dito na, nagkakaroon sila ng spring, ng summer, ng autumn, or ng winter. May four seasons na sila. So, yung climate is nagbabago-bago, matagal, gradually, over time. Uh, with that, yung mga uh, buhay, yung mga living things, okay, nag adjust to the new conditions. But, today, okay, on the moment we have right now, ang estado is, it's changing rapidly, which is supposedly slow. Okay, and that is on a global scale. So, climate and the climate change. Ano ba yung mga factors na nakaka-apekto dito sa ating climate? Okay, yung factors na nakaka-apekto dito is the temperature and the precipitation. Okay, we know temperature, hotness or coldness. It can be measured by thermometer. So, ano ang apekto na itong temperature? Of course, pag uh, malamig, syempre hindi, kung, hindi ka magsusot ng makapal na damit, no? If if malamig naman, no, susuot ka ng mga sweaters, of course. So, itong temperature, okay, and precipitation, so the type, amount, and frequency of precipitation, ayan, pwedeng makita at ma-measure. So, in terms of precipitation, ito doon sinabi natin kanina, may, may type yan. Okay, may, yung amount yan, okay, it kang gano kadalas. Okay. Nakikita yan and then na measure with that, you can determine the climate of an area. So, each type warrants a specific piece of uh, clothing and degree of preparedness. So, yung mga naranasan natin climate, iba't ibang preparedness ang ginagawa ng mga tao. So, both temperature and precipitation influenced by other factors. So, temperature and precipitation, may nakaka-apekto rin sa kanila. Okay, temperature, sabi natin, climate. Ano na apekto? Ano yung mga factors na naaapekto sa climate? That is the temperature 
precipitation. Okay, yun yung nakaka-apekto ng pagbabago ng klima. And with the temperature, ng ano ang mga factors na nakaka-apekto sa temperature, we have the latitude. Okay, the proximity to large bodies of water and elevation. However, how, on the other hand, we have on the precipitation, which uh, can be affected by the following factors, the proximity to mountain ranges and wind. So, let's take a look. Alright, so this is the factors that influence temperature. We said latitude. Okay, in, in our AP subject, in our previous subjects in science as well, we na discuss yung mga parts na to. Okay, ng uh, ating imaginary lines that can divide the areas. Okay, ng ating globe. Okay, to see it more clearly, uh, we know that Earth is tilled, tilt by 23.5 degrees as it revolves around the sun. Hindi naman siya straight, yeah? medyo nakatabi niya siya. And the two parts is divided on the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. And this is the equator, which is a zero degrees. Okay, so when we were in grade 7, we were able to learn how to locate um, how, uh, how to locate an area on the map okay, given those degrees. So, going up 20 degrees, at uh, 23.5 degrees north from the zero degree from the equator, that is the Tropic of Cancer, followed by the 66.5 degrees north, okay, which is the Arctic Circle, as it goes up 90 degrees north, that is the North Pole. Going down from the equator, zero degrees, so south, south tayo, no? we have the southern hemisphere, and then under southern hemisphere, we can find the Tropic of Capricorn, which is 23.5 degrees below south the equator antarctic circle which is 66.5 degrees south and south pole uh, south pole which is 90 degrees south and so we know okay, that this earth's asia uh, tilt creates an imbalance in the amount and length of exposure of areas in the sun okay alam natin na nakaka-apekto ito as it okay, as the ray okay, of the sunlight touches the area okay doon sa ating equator sa ating northern and south na nakaka-apekto yung amount nagkaroon ng imbalance so we know that the countries along the equator just like us no just directly exposed to the sun uh, they are warmest and have a climate of wet and dry seasons. So, tayo yun, know, wet and dry seasons. Okay? So, in June, uh, it is summer in the Northern hem Hemisphere. So, kapag ka June, the Northern Hemisphere daw, summer. Okay? Because it is directly exposed to the sun. So, direct, we know na, kunwari, ako yung sun, pag umiikot-ikot yan, nag-revolve yan, okay, around the, the sun. So, when June, Si Northern Hemisphere is summer kasi directly siya. Okay, directly siya nakatutok doon sa ating uh, sunlight. Winter naman kay Southern Hemisphere kasi naka-tilt away siya. Diba? Nung, <coughs> nung pinag-aral natin nung Ginsaibet. So at this year, the North Pole also points toward the sun. So pag umikot na siya, ayan. So uh, North Pole also points toward the sun experiences daylight uh, for 24 hours. Uh, dum, nakatutok siya summer, 24 hours daylight, while dark all day sa South Pole. So, in September naman, umigot na siya. Northern Hemisphere, okay, the Northern Hemisphere faces away from the sun. Ito ang isa na, faces away from the sun. So, ang mangyayari is dark all day dun kay Northern Hemisphere. And then, it experiences, ayan, we have start, uh, starts experiencing the autumn while spring begins on the southern hemisphere kasi natamaan na siya ng araw eh, no? so in the north pole it, uh, north pole it is dark all day September to March while in the south pole the sun is visible all the time ayan so makikita na so yung kanina nalaman natin na uh, parang na, uh, nakaka-apekto of course sa mga halaman at activities ng mga tao okay nakaka-apekto higit pa sa temperatura yung latitude ng isang area. So, siguro kung medyo nasa taas tayo, medyo malapit tayo sa North Pole or sa South Pole, maybe we could have the four seasons. However, hindi tayo doon, malapit tayo sa equator. So, we just only have 
a wet and dry season. So, directly tayo nakaka tropical country. So, we are tropical country. So, we have islands. Next one is the factor on the affecting temperature. We have the uh, large bodies of water. So, islands. This is an our island and we can see the windward side okay, on the east shore and the leeward side on the west. What do we mean by this windward and leeward? So, kapag ka windward, ito yung mga areas kung saan yung hangin is nagmumula sa dagat, sa bodies of water, papunta sa land. Kapag kaliward side naman, ito yung mga area kung saan nagbo-blow yung hangin mula, okay? Mula sa lupa, papunta rin sa dagat. So, they are warm and dry. Yung sa windward naman, of course, that is cool and moist. So, ito yan. Example na Boracay Island and Boracay. So, the Uh, windward side is the eastern part. So, shhh, ano magbublow yun dyan. So, medyo malamig. Yung, na, yung nakakarang, medyo malamig. And then, ito naman, yung hangin na mula dito, shhh, the leeward side, is medyo you know, warm and dry. So, therefore, yung mga, yan, is on the eastern shore, and the leeward side is on the west. Ito siya, west. So, beaches have calmer and waters. Ideal for the scuba diving, snorkeling, and other activities. The constant winds on the eastern shore, okay, mas maganda siya for wind surfing. Kasi yung movement is papunta dito. So, wind surfing yung mga activities dito. Dito, scuba diving, snorkeling. Ayan. Ayan. So, we know water cools down temperature. Tama? So, we drink uh, enough water para ma-moderate yung temperature natin. So, water heats up and cools down. Okay, so water heats up and cools down more slowly than land masses. Mas matagal mag-cool down mula sa mainit na temperatura ang tubig compared sa land masses. Kaya yung mga coastal areas are usually cooler even in summer. Okay. Warmer ocean currents bring warmer climate, while colder ocean currents cause a cooler climate. So, in terms of current na to, sa tubig na to, nung dagat, pagka warmer yung ocean, of course, uh, warmer climate. Kapag ka colder yung ocean currents, yung dali ng tubig, mas malamig. Cooler climate. So, wind blows from the sea toward land, and a moist, warm air that condenses to form rain clouds. We know that Malamig yung galing sa ocean. Pag, nag, pag napunta yan doon sa land masses, okay, eh, eh, makita natin dito, from the sea toward land, moist warm air that condenses to form rain clouds. Okay, so nagko-condense siya and then it forms rain clouds. After some time, it can rain, thus cooling the area. Malamig din na sa land masses. So, we have here, try standing in front at example, no, ice block. Have an electric fan blow through it. Then, mararandaman mo ba yung lamig ng hangin? Then, kapag ka, sa tayo, tumayo ka naman sa oven, and then, uh, may electric fan, no? mararandaman mo ba yung hot air? Okay, so, the proximity, yung proximity, sinasabi na din dito, yung pagiging malapit. Yung pagiging malapit ng isang land masses sa bodies ng water, nakaka-apekto sa temperatura ng hangin, kidepende sa temperatura ng daloy ng tubig sa dagat. Okay, which are blown into the land sa kalupaan mula sa dagat. Next one is the elevation. Okay, elevation, angat, no? pagkaangat. Mas mababa ang temperatura okay, in relationship with elevation. Pag mas mataas ang elevation, we're talking about uh, high airs, no? like the Baguio. So, kagayan, ayan. So, we have the higher elevation, the lower the temperature, So, sa summer, particularly, the temperature, pag summer na sa area ng mga, okay, sa mga area na to, the temperature, as one goes into the higher altitudes, and rises at what travels to the lowland. So, kapag nasa taan at taas ka ng bundok, mas malamig. Tama. Ngayon mo mga tinahid ka. Pag, pag bundok sa may lowland, sa may paano ng bundok, medyo mainit. So, bumaba ba ang temperatura ng hangin habang pataas ng pataas ang elevation? In a rate of 2 degree to 4 degree, Fahrenheit per 1,000 feet. So, kada 1,000 feet, pwede bumaba yung temperatura ng hangin mula sa 2 degrees to 4 degrees depende, no? Let's say, nasa, nasa 2,000 feet ka na, no? 
So, so let's say 4 degree. So, 8 degrees na yung minus doon wala sa lowland areas. Okay, next we have the factors that influence precipitation. Pagbagsak nung kanina, nung mga hail, snow, rain, drizzle, shower. So, eto ay nakaka-apekto. Ano yung mga factors na nakaka-apekto sa precipitation? We have the proximity on the mountain ranges. Yung uh, lugar naman, kanina proximity in large bodies of water, temperature, eto naman proximity, pagiging malapit mo sa mga mountain ranges. So, mountains influence precipitation. Okay. Sa anong paraan? We have the orographic effect and we have the rain shadow effect. Yung orographic effect, okay, dynamics ang air and precipitation on the windward slope of the mountain. Moist ang air masses dito that pushes upward and then pag naka pushes upward, then kapag ka, ah, nakaranas siya ng malamig na hangin, magkocontent siya. Therefore, mag-perform mag ng rain clouds. And then, kapag ka saturated na yung clouds, marirelease yung precipitation. So, ito yung makulan na part, no? Yung rain shadow effect naman that nangyayari sa leeward slope okay, ng mountain is generally dry. Okay? Only, uh, only less rain, konti lang yung ulan. That's why yung tawag sa kanya, rain shadow. So, the amount of precipitation on the leeward side is less than the windward slope. So, with that, Okay, Naka, isa sa mga nakaka-apekto is yung wind. So, wind movement of air caused by heat from the sun. The heat from the sun uh, excites or makes the uh, air particles move faster. Therefore, the, that, that's why there's a wind. Okay, so winds that originate from warm, warm area, yung hangin na mula sa warm area, okay, brings about warm temperature. Yung mga wind naman na galing sa malamig na area, cool ang binibigay niya na temperature. So, wind is moving horizontal manner yan. Okay, that distributes the air, lahat, pollutants, the heat, the moisture, the soil, no, parang, ad, and other lightweight materials, kung ano man yung object na sobrang maliit na yan. So, parang siyang ano, no, uh, yung mga pollination agents, no, mga, mga pang nagpap, isa sa mga, yan, yung wind, eh, isang agent natin yan. Okay. So, we have wind traveling vertically can push, yung mga wind na nagta-travel vertically can push warm air upward which cools down to form rain clouds. So, yung mga hangin na mula sa mainit na lugar, pag nag-travel vertically yan, pwede mag-travel vertically, aangat. Yung malamig na hangin, bababa. And then, as it becomes saturated, moist, in the rain clouds will form and then after some time, magkakaroon na ng precipitation. Our air that sinks becomes warmer. Yung hangin na malamig, bumababa. And then, magiging warmer yun. Okay. Causing evaporation and fair weather. So, kaya nga nararamdaman natin. Okay. Parang ano, no? parang convection current lang. Sa heat transfer. So, ito siya. Yung sa may kanina. So, moist warm air rises as it uh, touches the mountain. So, itong warm air na to aangat. And then, cooler air yun nandito. And then, it will, when they meet, they will be a formation of moist. Okay? So, that moisture condenses. Ayan. Habang lumalamig yung hangin natin. And then, after some time, naging such, nagpo-form ng clouds. And when, this is the windward side. Okay? So, when this is, ito yung ocean natin. So, when this one saturated, it will form a precipitate. Ayan, rainy windward slope. Yung ating leeward side naman, yung dry so, uh, dry leeward slope natin, the range, nakaka-experience ng rain shadow effect at orographic effect. Natatakpan siya. So, ang tendency is konti lang yung napupuntang uh, patak okay, ng precip precipitation sa kanya. Less yung nararanasan yung precipitation. Mas nga, natatakpan siya. Do hindi naman to hindi mas hindi naman pwedeng sabihin na totally hindi yung ulan. Just a minimal amount lang naman. The orographic effect with right side and then the rain shadow effect on no, the leeward side. Ayan, so ito na it uh, bukod sa mga factors the noong temperature, precipitation, proximity to mountain ranges, proximity to large bodies of water. 
Okay, ito yung nangyayari. Okay, another. Ito yung kailangan focus natin, yung climate change talaga. Specifically, the greenhouse effect. So, yung climate change, matagal ng problema. Okay, kaya nga sabi dito, century scale, ano, hundreds, of, hundreds of years. That has been brought by the industrialization. So, as the industrialization happens, and may climate change na tayo. Because, industrialization emits greenhouse gases. And those greenhouse gases, anong ginagawa nila? Okay, they can absorb infrared radiation, natatrap sila, imbes na they can freely uh, move out on the at on the Earth's atmosphere. So, this uh, review lang, no? Our Earth's atmosphere, nitrogen, 78%, 21% oxygen, and 0.93%. Yung natitira, ang 0.07, others na yun. So, the gases includes, the greenhouse gases, ito yung mga in include sa kanya, we have carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, ozone, and nitrous oxides. Okay, as well as the CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, are human-made greenhouse gas. Ano na matatagpuan itong mga CFCs natin? Refrigerants, sa air conditioners, sa mga refrigerators ng rep, sa freezers, okay, sa heat pumps. They're also found in some foam plastics. Ay, nag-release din para ng CFCs to. And also, ginagamit dito sa pag-manufacture ng mga electronics. Again, those, these greenhouse gases, ano ang ginagawa niya? Nagtatap siya. Okay? ng infrared radiation. So, let's say, for example, we have here, okay, a glass house. Yan, ito yung atmosphere natin, no? Makapal yung glass house natin. Ito yung earth. Trap heat from the sun where the plants are grown. Okay? The glass panels, greenhouse, allow light to pass through, but they keep the heat from escaping to warm the plants, especially, uh, especially in very cold climates. May ginagandahan naman, okay, um, ating uh, greenhouse gases. No? Malaki ang tulong ng greenhouse gases sa atin because it maintains the temperature, the warmness okay, ng ating earth. So, pag wala ito, sobrang, may tendency na sobrang lamig, lamig tayo bigla. So, what would happen if there were no greenhouse gases? Sabi nga dito, it's important. Without them, earth will be too cold from human survival. So, however, pag nasobrahan na ang greenhouse gases natin, magiging too hot. Hindi, hindi na just right yung temperature natin. Too hot na. So, just one degree. Tignan nyo, just one degree rise in the temperature is enough to cause problems in the humans, plants, and animals. Kailan natin ma-realize na, okay, na dahil sa, activi dahil sa activities natin, okay, dahil sa activities ng tao, ginagakaroon tayo ng change and the ako contribute tayo sa global warming and then and after some time nagiging climate change. So it should be realized that climate change is not new. Earth's, tem Earth's temperature, cold or warm since the beginning of time. Okay, I want you also to know na normal na talaga ang climate change. Okay? Kasi nga dati, di ba? Ayan, covered on ice, ice age. Ano? Sheets of ice, na-cover tayo sa buong sheets of ice. So, normal ang climate change. So, these sheets of ice uh, would reflect back the sun from more efficiently than non-ice areas. Yung mga areas na maraming sheet of ice, nire-reflect niya yung sunlight. Okay? This phenomenon is called as the albedo effect. Albedo is the fraction of the solar energy reflected back to space. Yung effect ng pag-reflect back ng sunlight going to the space is albedo effect. So, scientists attribute the changing cycles of Earth's climate to many factors, including the sensitivity to small changes in sun's incoming radiation, as influence the shapes of Earth's orbit, the angle then, ng tilt ng Earth's axis natin in the direction where North points. So, carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases also play a role in warming Earth. So, aside from the changing cycles ng Earth's uh, aside from the sensitivity, okay, ng incoming radiation, and then, because of the Earth's orbit, nakaka-apekto yan sa cycle ng pagbabago ng klima natin. And also, the amount of carbon dioxide, no? One of the greenhouse gases. Ito siya. Ang nangyayari, sun radiation, and then, dahil sa greenhouse gases na present dito, so, some 
A sum is reflected of the ice sheets ayan, by the Earth and the atmosphere. So some of them, hindi lang basta ice sheets. No? Because of the Earth's atmosphere, yung iba sa kanila na talagang nababanda pa po sa outer space. And then, some of the infrared passes through. Ayan, yung iba na dederecho lang. And some is absorbed and re-emitted. Iba na absorbed, yung iba na re-emitted. So, these greenhouse gas molecules, yung iba sa kanila, imbes na mag-emit palabas, nagpabanda-banda dyan. So, natatrap. Okay? So, ang mangyayari is, na maintain yung warm ng Earth's surface natin. Ayan. So, uh, infrared radiation is emitted by the Earth's surface. The effect of this to warm the Earth's surface and the, and the lower atmosphere. So, you may have scan, you may scan this okay, to learn more about the rules of greenhouse gases. So, global warming. Ito na nga. Okay, ito na yung ating idea okay, na normal ang climate change. Okay? But, the global warming is not. Okay? It is a long-term average in global temperature. Climate change is a result of a global warming. Kita nyo? Refers to the changes. Ano nangyayari? Yung dahil sa global warming, nag-change yung precipitation patterns natin. The intensity, the frequency, and the episodes of heat, sweep, and drop. While global warming describes as overviewing the warming of the entire planet, climate change affects specific areas, regions, or zones. So, tandaan natin, when the Earth's atmospheric temperature rises, tumaas ang temperatura ng ating Earth, some areas will experience very cold climate, okay, and others extremely hot climate. So, global warming, okay, change have been interchangeably, napagpapalit natin ito, you know, global warming and climate change. What actually magkaiba yan? Okay, yun sila parehas. Human activities produces greenhouse gases. And that greenhouse gases raise global temperature that triggers climate change. So, ito yung top 5 causes ng global warming. Hindi naman ito lang yung causes. Okay? Marami. Top 5 ito. Carbon dioxide that emissions from burning gasoline. And that from the motorized vehicles, no electric power plants, okay, homes, Yan, heated with gas or oil. Those gas or oil, when heated, they produce carbon dioxide. Ano pa? The fossil fuel burning power plants. So, they also contribute to the carbon dioxide emission. As well as the clearing of the forested area para sa agricultural purposes. Okay, nag emit ng carbon dioxide yan. The methane emissions from animals, agriculture such as rice, paddies, and from arctic seabeds. Nagkakaroon ng emission ng methane. Methane is a gas na pag gusto magpalawak ng rice agriculture, the increased number of livestock, in the creation of more landfills, so tambakan, no? like Smoky Mountain on the Litex and the Commonwealth. Ayan, nagkakaroon dyan na emission ng methane. Kaya pag tumalag nagtatambak ng basura. And, yun yung parang masangsang mabahaw na amoy, no? na amoy as, okay? Kapaya pagka sinilyaban mo yung bulok na basura, apo yan kasi may methane gas yan as well as the natural gas pipeline na nagli-leak, may mga methane na nag-release on towards the atmosphere, increase in the use of chemical fertilizers. Pag tumataas ang use ng chemical fertilizers, ano nangyayari? Nagkakaroon ng emission ng nitrous oxide. Okay, as well as nitrous oxide can be emitted from the coal burning power plants. So, kapag nagkaroon ng in-spray uh, fertilizers, nagbe-break down yun sa soil, napoproduce yun, nitrous oxide. Okay, so mas maganda yung mga organic fertilizers. So, deforestation, ayan, so pwede pang nag-deforestation ka, no? The forest trees take carbon dioxide and release in oxygen. Alam natin sa topic natin sa photosynthesis, sobrang importante ng mga halaman ng mga puno because they're the one collecting carbon dioxide and releases oxygen in the process of photosynthesis. So, forest also, reduce the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So, kaya mas maganda pag marami kang tanim na puno or halaman sa bahay mo kasi na-absorb mo yung carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide is one of the gases responsible for the greenhouse effect. So, we have here the 
Ayan. Okay, the carbon and ecological footprints. Ano to? Carbon footprints, sinasabi natin na ito yung release ng carbon dioxide toward the atmosphere. Okay, saan nang gagaling? Sa activities or tayong individ individual. Okay? So, it, lahat tayo nag-contribute sa global warming. Okay? Ecological footprint measure the use of resources. Ito yung pag-measure sa resources ng earth okay, to regenerate bio, to regenerate bio capacity. So, in, para sa paggamit natin. So, may, research, may resources yung earth and then ginagamit natin. So, in 1970s, human's annual ecological footprint equal to earth's annual bio capacity. So, yung bio capacity ng earth na resources is napupunan okay, yung pangangailangan natin. Okay, yung kakayahan ng earth magproduce ng resources na pupunan. Okay, that is our ecological footprint. In other words, ecological footprint is equivalent to one planet earth. So, yung ecological footprint natin, one earth equals dun sa demand natin, sa pangangailangan natin. Resources is equal na pupunan, is enough doon sa ating demand. So, according to World Wildlife Fund, WWF, the human ecological footprint, mainly due to carbon emission in 2007, dahil sa pag-emit ng carbon dioxide natin. Okay. Yung ecological footprint natin is ng equivalent to 1.5 planet Earths. Ano ibig sabihin nun? It exceeded the bio capacity by 50%. This also means that it will take 1.5 years to regenerate the renewable resources used that year. So meaning, kailangan pa natin ng 1.5 years para ma-regenerate yung mga resources na nawala. Para mapunan yung kulang, yung kailangan natin. Okay? Kung baga, okay, by the 2030, the ecological footprint is projected to balloon about to two planets. Imagine mo, dahil sobra na, okay, mas mataas yung gamit natin ng resources kaysa sa pag-regenerate ng earth. Okay, hindi na kaya yung kapasidad ng demand natin. Hindi na kaya as well ng kapasidad ng resources natin. Ganun na tayo nagiging okay, abuso okay, sa resources ng earth natin. Kaya nga by 2030, yung pangangailangan natin okay, is hindi na sapat. We need two planet earths na. Okay? Ganun tayo kalupit. Okay, I hope you were able to understand the factors affecting climate change as well as uh, the weather, the factors affecting weather and weather, climate, and the same, global warming and the climate change are not the same. Okay? The rise in the global war, in the global temperature indicates global warming and then after some time, will change the climate. So, it's up to you. It's, uh, nasa kami na natin, okay, sa mga maliit na bagay na kaya natin gawin para matulungan ang ating planeta. So, with that, thank you so much for listening.